the lighting in Tenet may very well be one of Hoyta's best work yet. But not because every shot is beautifully refined. In fact, quite the opposite. It almost felt like a documentary in some moments of the film. Many scenes were purposely unrefined. What Hoyta has accomplished with Tenet is a visual masterpiece of incredible immersion, a cinematography in its purest form in the service of the story. For me, it comes very much from sort of the, the humbleness towards, you know, the extreme visceralty of the IMAX, IMAX format itself. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it's like a gigantic uh, window of of emulsion, and it it has such a ability to capture details uh, in such a in such a beautiful way. I don't know. It's something that I I feel very sort of humbled by it. It's literally it's like the the clearest and most sort of generous and tactile eye, eye into into the world. You know, there's just no no better uh, format out there than that. So. Tenet has more IMAX footage than any other film in history. They filmed with the Aeriflex 765, the IMAX cameras, the Panavision 65, and a new film camera called the Logmar. Although they filmed a lot of IMAX footage, most of the film was actually shot on the Aeriflex 765 and the Panavision 65. Started without you. Hope you don't mind. I'll catch you. Same for me, please. I'll send the waiter. I'll just pass on the order. Hoyta says, IMAX cameras are noisy. When you want to record sound and dialogue, you have to work on a different format. So we shot IMAX whenever we could and used the next best format, 65 millimeter for dialogue. It was purely a practical decision. Almost every dialogue scene that they didn't want to ADR is mostly shot with the other cameras. And you can usually tell by the aspect ratio. 2.20 to 1 is the Aeriflex 765, and the 1.43 to 1 is the IMAX. May I help you, sir? I'm Mr. Crosby's lunch. I presume you mean sir, Michael Crosby's lunch. The camera and lens package is a very similar setup to when they shot Dunkirk. It's actually pretty much the same camera and lenses. Hoyta is a bit of an engineer. He doesn't just use whatever is available to him, which will no doubt have limitations. He will customize and tweak lenses and lights to do exactly what he needs for the film. He is an artist that really understands storytelling and helps the director greatly in achieving their vision. Christopher Nolan says, Hoyta's degree of artistic sensitivity, along with a brain that lets me see him as both engineer and artist, combines the purely creative with the ruthlessly pragmatic. The greatest DPs help you find a storytelling balance between creative exploration and practical execution. They used converted Hasselblad still lenses to cover the full negative. Like Dunkirk, Tenet was shot entirely with spherical lenses. Hoyta says, optically, it is so much more pure than anamorphic, with much less glass and light refraction between the subject and the emulsion. Their go-to lens was a custom-built Panavision Sphero 80mm prime lens. They also had a set of Hasselblad lenses they called the Micro Macro in 50mm and 80mm, which let them magnify to a 1 to 1 ratio for both inserts and some of the biggest close-ups ever seen in IMAX. As with most Panavision lenses, they are less clinical and produce incredibly beautiful images. A moderate focus roll-off and blended layers of contrast allow the lenses to capture pleasing skin tones in a soft, classic overall look. Also, take a look at the way he frames his subjects. Hoyta loves center framing them. I, I just came out of Interstellar, for instance, and I really gotten into this. Uh, um, I started believing very much, in, intuitively, I started believing very much in center punching you know, mm -hmm. opposed to uh, neatly composing with, uh, with, with, you know, three quarter of the right side and a lot of negative space. And 
and I wanted to yeah give a much uh, stronger uh, functionality towards this this bond you know like like making it very matter of factly and, and and give it a certain ease before we get into the lighting we just wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor nordpass nordpass is a new generation password manager that makes your life exponentially easier and safer It'll store all your passwords in one place, organize your logins and private notes in a secure password vault. It's brought to you by the cybersecurity experts who also built NordVPN, so they definitely know their security. You can access those passwords on all your devices, the autofill on your phone or on your computer. There's also an option to share passwords safely to your friends and family, so your Netflix password won't be floating around in text messages or emails. If you wanna give it a try, you can use it on one device for free or you can use our link, go to nordpass.com slash altercine. There's a really good deal right now. You'll get 70% off for a two year membership to Nordpass Premium, and you'll also get an extra month free. This is going to make your life easier and safer at the same time, and it's really affordable. So I highly recommend you go check out Nordpass. Hoite has always been about realism and naturalism with his lighting. And with Tenet, I feel that he has really pushed that boundary. Hoite says, We wanted reality, not beauty. We pretty much did away with continuity and the propensity to shoot in backlight. All of the things you're taught as best practice as a cinematographer. The aim was to take what was given, to use natural available light as much as possible, and to add as little extra light as possible. I always have the ambition to use natural light because I love its richness and it is something I can learn from. You always want to base your film reality on actual reality. Hoyta's lighting style is very much about lighting the area and letting the actors be free. The location, the light, the look is what it is. He doesn't really like to bring in lights close to the set as he finds it limiting and unnatural. I pride myself into uh you know, not um, encroach your set with too many sources that are standing. You know, keep 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 them away, keep them further away, and make them make make them bigger. So 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 you have you have a space of being. You know, that is not uh, not necessarily a film set and is not technology. You know, I think one of the most important thing for me is is also you have to help the imagination of your um, actors. You know, you're, you're creating a mood, and and that mood should to a certain extent be evident on the set. It's not something that you just should have in your head and that then comes out some point later. But I think the more people sort of are with you on in, in that in that thinking, the better it is. So so in a way I always like to um, keep light sources, you know, a little further away if possible. Hoyte says, I was lighting for the scene rather than just a shot. We will make adjustments for a given shot, but in achieving a fluid visceral IMAX experience, it's about capturing immense levels of nuance. Your approach is to be pure. If you light a whole scene, you figure out where the light would be coming from. For me, it's not ever a macro approach about shadows and such. I try to keep my light sources far from the epicenter of the set, unless it is an on-camera practical. Aesthetically, I believe this gives me a controlled richness that works for the story. I mean, there's many ways to, to, do, to do things and none of the ways is wrong or right, but I think you just have to figure it out in yourself what, what suits you the best. And, and, and as you start figuring this out, you have to try to be true to, 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 to that, that piece, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and there's no shame in being very happy that something worked out technically when you're learning, you know? That, 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 that there's, there's no shame in that. And the only, the only, the only difference is, is that you might learn later that there's also more to it than, than, than just being technical right. And, and please, you know, try to stay close to those impulses as well you know try to try to nurture and try to respect those those kind of impulses as much as technology you know i mean it's very important to start to learn to work with your heart you know it sounds very cheesy but but 
um, you know, uh, ultimately, I think that's what what gives you the warm and fuzzy feeling when you when you when you watch something or when you watch your your own work or you know or the lack of it gives you you know it gives you a barrier between what you've done before.